Welcome to the Common Man Football Show. My name is James Coburn, and I'm back. We're going to cover the Oakland Raiders 2018 NFL Draft Class based on analytics. Uh, so we're going to look at production data, athleticism data, uh, to kind of determine what the kind of upside is for the players that the Raiders selected. Uh, this Raiders draft has gotten really hated on, and uh, I do understand there's differences of opinion, but this entire video is not about my opinion. It's about the facts. That's all it's about. It's about what are the chances of these, uh, do these players have of becoming successful NFL players based on the data, based on how previous draft classes usually perform on the data, and that is what this video is going to entail. Uh, in terms of data. So if you're new to the channel, new to the work that I do, all terms and definitions will be in the description. So with that out of the way, let's get to the picks in the draft, starting with uh, the number one pick of the Raiders in terms of the first round, which of course was Colton Miller, offensive tackle out of UCLA. Uh, when you look at his athleticism traits, he's by far the most athletic offensive tackle in this particular draft class, 87.33 in terms of explosiveness, 85.58 in terms of speed, and 93.48 in terms of flexibility or balance for a size, which basically deals with his ability to you know, keep his feet, uh, if you will. Uh, when you look at him compared to all pro potential and pro bowl potential, he pretty much hits pre almost all the marks. Uh, the speed score is not exactly all pro threshold, but definitely pretty decent, but has all pro to pro bowl potential just based on his overall uh, you know, athleticism. When you look at the averages at the position, looks more like a pro bowler than an all pro player when you look at the averages, but still very, very solid overall profile. As I've said in previous videos, I think Colton Miller has a very good chance of becoming a long-term starter or better. And I do understand that a lot of people are like, this is too high, this is too high, but ultimately I just feel like this is a guy that has a good chance to become a successful NFL starter and leave it at that. So I don't hate the pick just because of that fact. It's hard to find a player that becomes a, a successful NFL starter. So um, ultimately, that's just where I'm at with this pick. Uh, then, of course, you get to P.J. Hall, defensive tackle out of Sam Houston State. Uh, a guy that some people are surprised by or not familiar with. Me, very familiar with him. Um, very productive player, 90.76 in terms of solo tackle data, 98.64 in terms of sack data, and 90.47 in terms of uh, tackle for loss data. When you look at the averages at the position, Pretty much is above kind of the Pro Bowl averages. Uh, and when you look at the bottom and thresholds, it uh, doesn't quite hit the All-Pro averages, but definitely is above the Pro Bowl averages. Um, his, his production was at a lower level uh, sense of competition. So he probably is more likely going to become a long-term starter than a multiple Pro Bowl player. But definitely pretty good production traits regardless of where he played. And then when you get to his athleticism testing, 99.99 in terms of explosion, 99.85 in terms of speed, and 75.20 in terms of flexibility for his size by far put up the most explosive uh, score out of every single defensive tackle since the 1999 NFL draft class. So he's super athletic, super productive at his level of competition. And I think has a very good chance of becoming a successful NFL starter, which is what you want. I hope that's what you want, but that's, that's the point. Uh, and then of course you get to Brandon Parker, offensive tackle out of North Carolina at and t uh, athleticism traits wise, not that great. 54.42 in terms of explosion, 6.71 in terms of speed, and 26.02 in terms of flexibility for his size. This is the one player where there has never been a long-term starting offensive tackle with a speed score as low as Brandon Parker. So this is the one player where there is some sort of an issue with his athleticism testing that kind of fails him flat out. Meaning that if I was actually going to make a big board, he would not even be on the board because there's never been a successful player with this type of athleticism trait and because of that, why would I invest a high draft pick into him? Uh, and then, of course, you look at the averages at the position. This basically makes things look worse. When you look at his speed score and flexibility score compared to what the averages are, and even his explosion score, which is his best athleticism trait, doesn't even come near the averages of an all-pro, pro bowl, or starter player. And then to kind of beat a dead horse, so I guess, uh, this is Malik Watson's athleticism traits, David Sharp's athleticism traits. Just to give you sort of a picture that the Raiders, other than Colton Miller, like again, Colton Miller, really athletic player. But for the most part, the Raiders under McKenzie do not really get the most athletic players for the most part. So uh, I think when you, when you look at Parker, he's kind of less athletic than Watson and Sharp, uh, which kind of makes you wonder, like, why would you invest that high of a draft pick in a guy like this? Um, so we'll see what happens, but ultimately uh, he doesn't look like a guy that's going to pan out long term just because of his overall athleticism traits. Uh, and then of course you get to Arden Key, edge out of LSU. 
Uh, when you get to his athleticism testing, which is the only major question mark, 5.07 in terms of explosiveness, 8.94 in terms of speed, and 33.97 in terms of flexibility. He's another player where there has never been a long-term starting edge rusher since the 1999, 1999 NFL draft class to have scored as low of an explosion score and as low of a speed score as Arden Key. That's not good. The only positives with Key is his production data. He had a 56.05 solo tackle score, 83.19 speed score, and uh, uh, not speed, but sack score, and a 65.78 tackle for loss score. So when you look at his production data, has Pro Bowl level production. You know, that's the basics with when it comes to R and Key. However, when you look at his athleticism traits, there has never been a long-term starting edge rusher with these athleticism traits. And in many ways, this, this pick kind of echoes Shalik Calhoun, this echoes uh, Jihad Ward, uh, the list goes on. Um, bottom line is, I don't think there's a very good shot that Arden Key becomes a successful long-term starter. But we do get into some good picks after this. We, of course, get Nick Nelson, cornerback out of Nebraska. Uh, pretty good production profile, 31.61 in terms of solo tackle data, 93.88 in terms of pass deflection data. And uh, even though his solo tackle data is sort of a question mark when you look at the bottom and thresholds, that pass deflection data is super, super decent. I mean, that's it's really very comparable to Denzel Ward's overall production. Um, if you actually go back and watch uh, the Denzel Ward video I did, um, very similar, except Nick Nelson in many ways is kind of better than Ward in terms of pass deflection data. Uh, and then, of course, you look at his athleticism traits, 85.30 in terms of explosiveness, 69.18 in terms of speed, and 87.76 in terms of flexibility. Pretty much has Pro Bowl level athleticism traits with really good explosiveness, really good speed. In many ways, he has kind of the same athletic profile of Gary and Conley, who was the Raiders draft pick last year in, in, in many ways, if not so kind of more athletic in certain sense. Um, bottom line is Nick Nelson, of course, is a guy that had uh, that was injured during the process. So a lot like Con well, Connolly wasn't really injured during the process, but he you know had the shin stuff that was you know after he was drafted. Bottom line is Nick Nelson, very good athleticism, pretty good production, has a good chance of becoming a successful NFL cornerback. Health is definitely going to be a major factor. In addition to Maurice Hurst, defensive tackle out of Michigan. Uh, when you look at his uh, production data, pretty decent, 96.60 in terms of solo tackle data, 44.55 in terms of sack data, and 83.66 in terms of tackle for loss data. Looks more like a Pro Bowl defensive tackle than an All-Pro defensive, ta defensive tackle, but still solid all-around production. When you look at the averages, averages at the position, the only area where he kind of falls flat is the sack data, but still good TFL and still good solo tackle data. And when you look at his athleticism traits, 62.44 in terms of explosion, 79.42 in terms of speed, and 60.11 in terms of flexibility, pretty much has close to all pro athleticism traits and easily pro bowl athleticism traits. Um, bottom line, when it comes to Maurice Hurst, there's been a lot of talk about his heart condition. I'm really not going to get into that, but when you look at him just based on his production and based on his athleticism traits, he looks like a Pro Bowl level defensive tackle. And if he can become that for the Raiders, this will by far be the best pick of the draft um, for them when, it, when you look at value and where they took him and those other sort of factors. If the heart condition doesn't become a serious issue in the next five to six years, if you will. Then, of course, we get to Johnny Townsend, punter out of Florida. And when it comes to punting data, which I don't really do a ton of, uh, Johnny Townsend had a 99.37 production score uh, in terms of his uh, punting average uh, at the college level. As far as what the thresholds are for punting, I haven't done enough research into this 100%, but just know that this score is based on every single punter since 2001 in the FBS. So either way you slice it, you at least want a punter to be really good in terms of his averages and Townsend is. He's in that 99 percentile area when it comes to his punting. So pretty good all-around college punter. Um, maybe he translates, maybe he doesn't because there's a lot of other things when it comes to punting I haven't done a lot of research into yet, but still pretty good production at the college level. Then of course we get to Azeem Victor, linebacker out of Washington. Uh, when you get to his production data, had a 78.05 uh, solo tackle score. Pretty much hits the near the Pro Bowl threshold in terms of bottom end threshold for solo tackle data, but doesn't quite hit the average Pro Bowl score of 88.36, but definitely is near the starter average. And when you look at his athleticism traits, uh, looks more like a starter than a all pro to Pro Bowl player, 42.78 in terms of explosiveness, 54.65 in terms of speed, and 49.66 in terms of flexibility. There's never been an all pro slash Pro Bowl linebacker with athleticism traits that are that low, but he definitely has a good shot to become a long-term starter. And lastly, we get to Marcel Aitman, uh, Oklahoma State. 
Uh, based on his production data, 43.34 in terms of his passing yards, mark share production. Doesn't quite hit the five-time All-Pro, three-time All-Pro, three-time Pro Bowl, or long-term starter threshold, meaning that there has been very, very few long-term starters who have scored less than a 58 or higher in terms of their uh, market share production. So very unlikely that Aitman becomes a long-term starter. And also when you look at the averages in terms of starter, pro bowler, and all pro players, doesn't look much better there either. And when you look at his athleticism traits, has a 63.01 explosion score, 38.30 speed score, and 50 flexibility score. Aitman does have all pro slash pro bowl athleticism traits. He has one in explosiveness. You only really need to have one athleticism trait in order to be an all pro slash pro bowl wide receiver. But when you look at his production, which is so low, you look at the fact that his athleticism is just not, I mean, this isn't like an elite level athlete. This is just a guy that has one above average athleticism trait. I think in many ways you're looking at a guy that looks kind of like Jerron Kreiner, you know, a guy that most likely his career will end up being that. Um, not a lot of success after that. Overall, when you look at the Oakland Raiders draft class and you look at it through the lens of data, it doesn't look that bad, guys. Uh, you know, Colton Miller, super athletic player. P.J. Hall, super athletic player and very productive at his level of competition. Uh, you look at Nick Nelson, very productive, very athletic, very similar to Gary Conley in many ways. You look at Maurice Hurst, very productive, very athletic. Uh, you look at Johnny Townsend, pretty good punter. You look at Azeem Victor, who could end up becoming a long-term starter. The only picks that I do not like based on the data, purely based on the data, Brandon Parker, there's never been a long-term starting tackle with his athleticism traits. Arden Key, there's never been a long-term starting edge with his athleticism traits. And Marcel Aitman, there's been very, very few long-term starters with that combination of production and athleticism traits. So ultimately, pretty solid draft. I mean, if those picks, if Miller, Hall, Nelson, Hurst, Townsend, and Victor, if all those guys become major contributors for the Raiders, or at least starters... This is not that bad of a draft. So we can argue about value and all that other kind of stuff, and there are better players on the board, but if you just look at it from a standpoint of, did we get successful players in this draft? Yes. Then the Raiders draft was a success. And of course, so my name is James Coburn. You can find my other work at draftcoburn at wordpress.com. You can also follow me on Twitter at Jim Metrics. And if you like this content and you want more content like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Uh, share this video as well with anybody that you know. Hit that notification button so that you're always reminded when another video of mine drops. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.